to episode 49 of Comics and Us. I'm Lumpy. And I'm Chris. And I'm TJ. This is the review show that reviews comics chronologically, kind of. Wow, you got it in one. Got it. Got it. Didn't even mess up any of the words. I didn't didn't fumble. I got it. I didn't even write it down. Oh. (laughs) Anyway, so this is, by the introduction, Lumpy's pick in our hiatus episodes. And we're covering issue one of Doctor Strange, the 2015 series. Uh, let me get the credits and crap out of the way, because it's going to take forever. It says it was released October 7, 2015, but it was published December 2015. I don't know what the difference between release and published is. Me neither. Maybe released is online, and published means print it and put it in the stores. That's possible. Yeah, digital and <laughs> physical. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we're going to go with. I'm right. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Alright, the other in chief of this was Axel Alonso. The cover artist is Chris Buckalo and Tim Townsend. This this has two stories in it. The first one was written by Jason Arno, penciled by Chris Buckalo, inked by Tim Townsend, Elve, and Mark Irwin, colored by Chris Bacato, Corey the letterer is Corey Pellet, and the editors is Nick Lowe and Charles Beachman. The second story was written by Jason Arno, penciled, inked, and colored by Kevin Nolan, lettered by Corey Petlick, and edited by Lick, Nick Lowe and Charles Beckham. Um, it's Jason Aaron, who served on news. Whatever. I'm just, just saying. I'm just reading off a list of names. No one cares about this part. The guy's a legend, okay? You can say his name right. Jason Aaron, okay? Uh-huh. That's all I'm saying. Well, before we get any further... Lump, why did you pick this comic? Uh, I, I love Doctor Strange. This is my... I, this is probably my favorite Marvel series. I would say it's my favorite comic that I've read, but um, I really like Spawn a lot. So, mm. I'm not sure right now. I'm just mm. saying that for TJ. So. Yeah, no, I'm glad. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I just really... This is my... This is my favorite, and I, again, didn't have time to send you guys the one that I really wanted to review, so I figured I'd stick with my favorite. Simple as that, I guess. All right, so the cover's weird. I didn't like his face on the cover. What's it looks strange. Face? I don't know. It doesn't look right. It, I mean, it, it's drawn fine in the rest of the comic, but it looks smeared or something on the cover. I do like that he's throwing up the metal sign, though. He must be, you know, an Aussie fan. Okay. <laughs> so the cover just is kind of... It's like a forced perspective of a close-up of Doctor Strange, but he's only at the top of it doing aforementioned sig- sign. He has skulls in- on his belt, and he's wielding an axe. I do like the battle axe, and the skulls look pretty cool, too. But oh, Actually, they might be shrunken heads. That one has hair and stuff. There's skulls and shrunken heads, it looks like. And it says Doctor Strange and number one, but doesn't have... Like, uh, price, like how much it costs, or anything really on this one. Which actually is is why I think Uncle Chris actually might have been right that it was released digital. (laughs) That's what I said, that's because this is the the, the digital release, that's why. Oh, maybe. Told you I was right. Well, you always say that, but doesn't necessarily mean (laughs) it's true. (laughs) Anyway, so, the story of, uh, well, wait, hold on. What was the story called? I got it written down. Oh, it has a name? Yeah, the, f- the first story is called The Way of the Weird. Okay. I have to get all the credits and shit out of the way. So just um, since Uncle Chris already brought it up, I actually am not a big fan of the way that they draw Doctor Strange in this comic. But I love all the other drawings in this. I just don't like the way they draw it. Yeah, His face. Comic. Well, this this first page is an older comic, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, that's from his original origin. It, he's in his original costume and everything. I like him there. He looks cool. And and in the other ones, because I've read almost probably, I'd say I've read all of Doctor Strange's comics. This is probably the worst drawn Doctor Strange. But the comic itself is really well drawn. Yeah, there's some detail. Yeah. It almost looks like a McFarlane, almost. It's, it's it, that, it is. That it's kind of got that dark with the detail. I, I like yeah. it a lot. This was my favorite. So so we open up with 
explaining who Doctor Strange is, another origin. Recap, yeah. resetting, because I guess this is a resetting on his story arcs and everything else. Yes. And it it's a uh, narration over past comic panels explaining who he is and stuff. And the narration over the past comic panels actually covers the words from the past comic panels in some of the spots. Yeah, so you can't, they like sum it up in the, in yeah. the little yellow boxes. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, it's, it's not bad, I, it's just different, you know? Yeah. We truly open up on a scene that's really hard to explain. But looks cool. <laughs> Doctor Strange is, like, in a void with a shield and electricity coming out of his hand. And these are they're these monsters coming at him that look like, what are they called? The Pac-Man Stephen King monsters with arms and legs. Oh, yeah, I can't think of the name of that movie. Langoliers, no. The Langoliers. They look like Langoliers. Langoliers. They look like yeah. Langoliers with arms and legs. <laughs> I can't believe I came up with that. And armor. They have weapons and, armor, yeah. and stuff. And there's teddy bears that for are kind of evil looking. And for some reason, that never I comes up. I don't feel like the teddy bears are evil looking. I feel like they just in like the, teddy bears. In this first page, that, that bottom one. Could kind of be the way the face is cut off a little bit, but yeah, the other ones in the background don't look. I think I know why the teddy bears at all. I think I know why the teddy bears are there, but I don't want to spoil it until we get to it. But yeah, so Doctor Strange is in front of a giant teddy bear that gets eviscerated, and it's just a giant fight scene up until this, for a lack of better word, Medusa shows up. Mm, yeah, I guess that would be a. a the better description of well, it. Technically, Medusa was the name of a Gorgon, but uh, we'll go with Medusa this, for it. I believe she's like a spider lady, right? She's got like eight arms. She does. She has a bunch of arms and legs. They don't really cover her too much. Like No, I feel like, like she's just a, like a demon kind of thing, mm-hmm. right? Anyway, yes. One of the Langoliers tries to eat Doctor Strange and doesn't go well, and then there are flowers for some reason, and... Well, if you know anything about Doctor Strange, it's always like psychedelic and crazy when you know when yeah. he's fighting and he's in this dream realm or whatever it's called. Yeah, he's in another dimension, basically. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind of what explains what these things are. They're they're parasites and different yeah. things on the other other planes. And he's fighting them, and then he ends up kissing the Medusa lady thingy. Well, he thinks she's into him. That's why. And then no, uh, he thinks everyone's into him. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so they kiss, and then he wakes up. Essentially, not, but it wasn't like a dream sequence. He was in the psyche of a what was it, an eight year old or something? Yeah, yeah it was definitely a child. Boy. Yeah. Anyway, I think the teddy bears were just the kid's imagination and his psyche being overtaken by those parasites that he was fighting because there's a teddy bear in a kid's bed. Right. He's trying to think of a teddy bear, too. Like, it's the good side of him and the bad side, maybe. Well, I think that's what his psyche was, and then the parasites are there invading his mind. Ah, right. okay. Giving him nightmares and stuff and making him think crazy. Yeah. And so, the kid also has got, a, like, a Wolverine action figure and a Spider-Man drawing. Yeah, and he's yeah. got, like, this sword, and there's another action figure, which I think is the thing. That's what I thought, too, from Fantastic Four. I'm yeah. not positive. And uh, he's got like a smiley face rug, which could be Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, it's true. No, this is Marvel. This is Marvel. You can't put DC stuff in Marvel. That's true. I forgot. <laughs> no, you're right. Is Watchmen DC? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, you're right. Anyway, Doctor Strange saves the day, and there's some you know dialogue about you know. It's funny. The so parents like, was, basically was, thanking him. And- yeah, but they, they were like, was he just making kissing sounds? <laughs> <laughs> so he leaves out the window for some reason. Because comic book people like to use windows instead of doors, that's why. We know this already. Well, this is a whole different universe. Uh, yeah, they're still. It's comics. <laughs> I don't... Yes, this Doctor Strange... I do, I do like how it's drawn. I don't like this Doctor Strange either. His cape looks weird. He doesn't have the gray streaks on the sides of his hair. I told you, the way they draw him in this whole comic, it's not... I Even in the whole series, I'm not a huge fan of the way he's drawn in it. I, I love this comic. I just don't like him. Yeah. His, his drawing. Yeah, I see it. So he's coming down from the window, walking down his 
cape because he's just showing off at this point. <laughs> or is it his scarf? I'm sorry, his scarf. Mm, this it, it's cape. No, that's his cape. He's fly floating down on his magic cape. But it looks like a scarf F from there on. I'm trying to remember well, what it's called and why I can't remember what the cape is. It is. Magic, it does turn magical cape. It does turn into a scarf, like he's uh, like he's trying to hide it or something, though. Yeah, you know, what the hell is it called? Anyway, so his third eye opens, which is an eye on his forehead, and he sees what no one else sees, like parasites and other monsters that no one that latches onto us. He's talking about how organisms are living off us, and it's more than what we see, and it's just a bunch of monsters. But then he sees a really weird one attacking some guy, and he tells him to be off, and then it eats him. Um, did you just go, like, way ahead of me? Ah, oh, there it goes, I see it. It's the Cape of Levitation, just in case anybody was wondering. No, I didn't go that far ahead of you, I just, like, I skipped a couple yeah. of panels of him. Yeah, walking. I got it. <laughs> it. It eats him. Right, and it but it doesn't look like anything's happening in the real world, but he's be really being eaten by this thing. And then he breaks out of it and kills it, and then he walks through a wall, because he really needs a drink into a bar. Yes, right. the bar. The bar with, with no, no doors. doors. Yeah. A magician's only lounge, hidden deep within the spells of New York City, where he's meeting up with some people. Dr. Cool. Vo- Dr. Voodoo, Shaman, and the Scarlet Witch. I have no idea who Dr. Voodoo or Shaman are, but I know the Scarlet Witch. Yeah. I don't really know who the sh- who Shaman is. I know Dr. Voodoo because he's been in a couple other comics, but I don't think I've ever seen anything with Shaman. I don't know. Shaman's like an Indian, tip- stereotypical Indian guy. Yeah, he's one I don't I don't know him. Now, um, Dr. Voodoo looks cool. He's got dreadlocks, he's got sunglasses on. Yeah, but he's stereotypical too. Yeah, I mean, because he's a, he's a voodoo yeah. doctor. The voodoo yeah. doctor. Yeah, stereotypical yeah. voodoo doctor, exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, you gotta have stereotypes. That's why they're there. Yes. <laughs> Just saying, it's not very creative. <laughs> anyway, and there was also supposed to be two other guys, but they left because Dr. Strange called to meet it, and he ends up being late to it, and... Apparently most have. people don't really like him either. They don't yeah. seem to like him. He's pretty much, he's a jerk. He, he yeah. is. He's very arrogant. He's, that's just, was always his thing even before he became the Sorcerer Supreme. He was an arrogant surgeon. And so he's explaining to these, the other magicians about what, how his day was going. And then Monaco, the Prince of Magic, shows up and tells him that the bill is coming due that, you know, a bunch, like, the end is coming, essentially, because of the cost of magic, because Doctor Strange is in sacrificing sheep every time he uses a spell. Rabbit. Right, and, and the whole story behind that is, is every time Doctor Strange does something, like, to cure that kid, or he goes through the planes, they're always, ha- for every action he has, there's always a reaction, there's something else, he has to pay the cost some other way. Or else this old man don't like it. He's there. not. This old man's pissed about it. Right. He's telling him like you keep your own borrowed time, basically, because you're not yeah. paying the cost. Anyway, back at seven one seven seven A Becker Street, Greenwich Village, New York. I guess that's his house. Bleecker Street. And yes, Bleecker that's, Street. Yeah. That's his mansion. That's the that's his location all the time. There's a lady outside. You know, questioning her own sanity for being there, like that she doesn't even believe it. And then Doctor Strange walks up, pretending not to be Doctor Strange, and then convinces her that you know if she needs help, that she should knock on the door, and she does. And then Doctor Strange walks by there, and then for some reason hangs upside down like a bat because he's strange. He's Doctor Strange. It's not even worth my time. <laughs> <laughs> And so we're inside the house where apparently he just has Christmas trees up all year round. Oh, yeah. That's nice. He loves Christmas. That's a pagan thing. All the different things you see in his house are all the different things that people like, you know, either worship or practice, whatever you want to call it. It's a different, like, magical things. You see the rose in the case from Beauty and the Beast. There's Chinese, like, dragons. And it's all the different things that you would technically be magical. See? Everything has a purpose, it. TJ. I get it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, there's a bunch of books and stuff, too. And she's... And the woman's like, there's something under my hat. And no, I, he knows there's something under her hat. He says, why don't you yes. show me what's under your hat? Well, she's like, okay, I looked in the mirror and I don't believe it. She takes off her hat 
and apparently there's a monster growing from inside of her head. Yeah. Yes. That's creepy as crap, too. And it, like, it explodes. Her head explodes out monsters. And what is that? That's the cat's toy. Oh, my God. I thought we had a monster on the podcast. Yeah, so her head explodes monsters, and then it's to be continued. That's it. Yes. Yeah? I don't know. It's, I'm intrigued. It was, you know what? I, I, I would read on. If you ever had time to, I seriously recommend it. It is like, yeah. it gets really good. I mean, it's it's definitely lays a lot of foundation for what the series is going to be. Right. But this issue was definitely just a setup issue. Yes. It, it's reintroducing you to Doctor Strange and the weird, weird world that he lives in. And so... And she becomes a big part of the series, obviously. That's why they're bringing her in. And then there's a couple other characters that do get introduced. The bar and the other people in the bar do become part of the series. It, it, it's a really interesting series. It's something that I, I do recommend to check out. If you if you ever were sick of what you're reading, check it out. It's worth it. Yeah. Anyway, it we're, not do- we're, we're not done yet. We still got another story here. Yes. Because there's a backup story. And this one is called The Coming Slaughter. And we start we start with a wounded man climbing up some steps. And he's being chased by these robot dog things. But he casts a spell to lock the door. And then he casts another spell to warn people who use magic that something's coming. I don't know. That there's danger. And so he sends out his butterflies to go... You know, spread the word, and the chains are broken, and these robot wolf dogs bust in and tackle him to the ground. He screams, and then... (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to wait to see how long you would just ignore it. (laughs) Uh, We're keeping all of this in this hiatus episode, just, just for everybody's comic relief here. <laughs> I'm going to take it away from the cat. <laughs> I like it. I think we should use it as one of our sound effects for when we like turn the page or something. <sighs> <laughs> All right, we're almost done. We got two pages left. Anyway, <laughs> these robots that I don't even know how to explain these robots. They're not robots. They're dogs with, like, outfits on. No, the humanoid robots. Oh, oh yeah, they oh, just are Cyclops. Me. Cyclops robots. They just oh, yeah, they're ball. creepy. Yeah. And they got, like, spherical heads. Yeah. And then this man in a robe comes in. His name's the Imperator. And he's going to destroy all magic. This is what I'm guessing here. To kill all the mages. And he blows up the... Magic guys, butterfly, so they can't warn anybody. And then we get a final splash page of people burning at the stake down underneath a tower. And the butterfly, one butterfly's talking as he falls, too. It's just a message he would repeat it into it. Ah, okay. Yeah, it was like, you know, a message butterfly or whatever. Oh, right, I see it. I see the whole message now. If you have the magic, hear these words. I got you. Yep. And it's just set up. It's just showing you what the villain of the story is going to be. So it's pro- it looks like science versus magic is what it's going to be. Now, do you I guys don't... think you're going to read this? Eventually, maybe, yeah. I like how All it's right. drawn a lot. I do enjoy how it's drawn a lot. And it looks crazy enough that I think I would like it. It's worth a read. I would spoil some stuff, but if you're going to read it, it's worth a read. It's, nah, it's if, really good. Yeah. I don't know, I was going to say, if you want to spoil, spoil, but I don't know if the listener wants you to spoil it. That's the problem, is I, yeah, I, yeah. I won't spoil for the listener. All right. So, any closing remarks on these two stories? They come no. together in this series. If you I get a chance that. to read it, it is, it is well worth it. What The setup for the, from this book is, is really well done if you, if you get time to read it. It comes together really cool. All right. Anything to say from you, Uncle Chris? Um, no. I mean, I would check it out. I, I definitely like the drawing. The artwork's good. I don't know that I like that Doctor Strange, but um, that's just not. I fun. don't. I don't. hate it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I think it gets a little better, like towards the end, or maybe I just get used to it. But uh, right. but the drawing of him himself, I I hate. But uh, but the rest of the drawings are really well done. 
I guess on that note. You cats right. got anything else so, to say? Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay. I searched the internet far and wide for a Doctor Strange joke, and I don't understand them. <laughs> so I'll give you two, and maybe you can explain to me. Now, I do kind of understand this one. I think it, it says, why does Doctor Strange never have Wi-Fi issues? Because he uses the Ethernet. That's where he goes, right? Yeah, the Aether is the mist, like, between okay. dimensions. Okay. Now, the other one is, I don't get this one at all. Why did Doctor Strange cross the road? And then it just says the wind blew him far. <laughs> I do not get that. <laughs> I don't probably, know that one either. Probably a reference from one of the books or something. Right. right from right. one of the comics that I don't, but I don't get it. I mean, you okay. Know, Here, okay, here's funny. one. <laughs> Here goes one. What do you call Doctor Strange's assistant in an elevator? What? Wong. Wong on so many <laughs> levels. <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> you know, because his sister's name's Wong. He's Wong. I'm actually really surprised money. because Wong is a big part of this this series. He is yeah. not in the first comic at all. And I yeah. thought he was. And then I read it again and I was like, wait a minute. Why does Wong not come out? He's in the next comic. 100%. So, uh, he's in it. are you saying there's something Wong with this comic? There's something Wong here. <laughs> Get it, TJ? There's something TJ, Wong. come on. I hear you giggling. TJ here from Comics and Us, just here to plug the social media. Check us out on Twitter. Our handle is at EverytNUs because someone took everything and us, but the name of the Twitter page is Everything and Us Podcast, and then the handle is at EverytNUs. You can also check us out on Instagram, which is also Everything and Us. These all encapsulate all the podcasts that I do, but you're going to find all your updates for Comics and Us anime and us so forth and so forth you can also contact us right now at everything in us podcast at gmail.com still working on the website and until then that's where you can get a hold of us that's all thanks for listening talk to you later bye